first memory of Bruno Conti was watching him play in a state game uh, down in 89, down at the Elstonwick Park. Obviously before that, um, running around for North Old Boys against uh, the Mighty Orman back in A section when both clubs were there. First met Bruno at state training in uh, 86. We were at Elstonwick Park, where we are now, and uh, he's come up to me and I've said, g'day, Russell Barnes, and he said, well, Bruno Conti, but you can call me Cake. So from then it was Cake and I was Barney, and that was it, and it was all, all goes from there. He was a very, very durable player, played everywhere, uh, flexible, he played halfback, he played midfield, he played forward, uh, but he never played on me. But he'll always tell you he was never beaten. No, he's quick to tell you that, don't worry about that. He exuded confidence. Yeah. He was good at winning the football, he was good at using the football, and on some occasions he probably let his opponents know it as well. He did fit in seamlessly because he was a good quality player who was uh, well established in the competition by then and well respected as a person and a player. Bruno, on some occasions when we were playing very poorly, he used to come over and tell me how disappointed he was for us. Um, I don't know whether that he was genuine or whether it was a, a ploy, um, it certainly stuck with me. He was very good, we knew who he was. He didn't necessarily have the white line fever, I didn't, I didn't see that in him, but he, he, was, he was polished. He was just, yeah, I, I used to stir him up a bit and say he was arrogant, but he quite correctly said that yeah, he was just confident. My first game in 1990, Bruno was a halfback flanker for North Old Boys and he was named in the centre and he was one of our best. I think the next year he was all Australian in 91 in Perth and we didn't have a win over there. But um, any years after that he was you know, basically named vice captain uh, after Rob Fuller captain for, for such a great period of time and it was, um, there was a real halcyon period there where we won a lot of footy games against states, against the country. Um, and Bruno was always in and amongst the best players and, you know, just a, a regular person. I do remember there was a game out at Footy Park. There's, there's just sort of the, the image of him running from, from centre-half back across the half-back and then clearing it around the wing um, time after time after time and with you know, ruthless efficiency. You always knew Bruno had your back. He very quietly spoke and he would fire up when he needed to. Um, but yeah, just a really measured guy and you always knew he was there, so um, like many throughout that period, you always knew uh, if you went to war, you were going to go to war with Bruno at your back, yeah. Uh, it makes me think loyal, a loyal, loyal person who gave his best every time he went out in the field. Bruno being elevated uh, to, uh, to legend status um, is, a, is a great honour and I, I, I feel really uh, humbled to have played with him um, and been considered uh, a teammate, but also as a friend, he's a superstar. Look, he, look he's a friend first, so um, I don't immediately think football. Probably what I said before, just the, the, the vision of him just clearing, running clear of a pack, or running clear of opposition, or running clear of a tackle, and just just hitting a target. Oh, he's a man of great values, but he's just a, a terrific family man. You know, loves his daughters, loves his wife. Loves his amateur footy, um, loves North Old Boys, would do anything to assist in an amateur sense. Um, he's just a really caring guy, he's a superhuman, you know, I love him, he's a ripper.